Uh, so I, yeah, I'm just going back through our chat, looking at the the concept. I said, oh, what was it? Travel, travel therapy, and stay with me. Stay with me on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I know that a lot of listeners have probably heard of this concept before, like travel therapy, um, eat, pray, love. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. About it. But yeah. Um, we know this concept. And if you've traveled anywhere in the world, you might have met somebody on the road that like maybe you're on like your week long vacation and you're right. at the resort and you meet somebody or you're on, you know, at a motel or hotel, wherever you might be, um, hostel, and you meet somebody who is not on a week long trip, but they're like on a year long spiritual journey type of thing. Right. Uh, I'm not downplaying that at all. I think I've, uh, I think that's, that's a, a very, brave thing for anyone to do to have to jettison your life and i think it really can help to reset i mean it's a no-brainer right if if you're struggling with your your current life and or there's something in your life you just you need a hard reset yeah travel can be just brilliant for that um but what i wanted to talk about was uh how do i phrase it yeah, I'd sent this in the text. Travel equals personal freedom and identity reset. Like you can kind of reinvent yourself, um, kind of tell the, your social world to F off for a little bit and do your own thing and come back. Um, you know, your study abroad, this type of thing, you know, yeah. uh, as a student. Whereas working abroad, taking a specific job is a commitment and personal responsibility in a novel world. So like, even if you didn't arrive, um, in a country having a job or a largely developed social circle, there's um, pressure to do these things that's totally absent when just traveling. So when you're traveling, you could decide just to kind of be monkish or right. be really social, do whatever you want. But if you're working, you're, you're throwing yourself a lot of responsibility. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, the thing about reinventing yourself is, um, is it sustainable? That's one of the things, you know what I mean? Like you're almost, you're, you're, you're almost, um, I don't want to say playing a role, but, uh, you're kind of like, um, I'm going to be the traveler guy or the traveler girl for the next year. I'm going to be, I'm going to force myself to be open-minded. I'm going to, you know, everything is uh, water off of a duck's back. It's, uh, I'm, um, I, I know what you're saying. Um, and it can be life-changing because of the experience that you, that you have. And you, um, and I, I keep going back to the book you mentioned, Eat, Pray, Love. I've never actually read the book. Um, I, I feel like I, I know the cliff notes of it. Um, but my understanding is she just kind of went back to her life again and uh you know wrote about that experience but has she ever paid a bill you know a rent bill you know or has she yeah. you know what i mean like it's it's uh or had had her visa dependent upon like you know waking up at 6 a.m right so yeah, I think that's kind of what I want. I wanted to say. I think um, yeah, again, I don't want to. I don't want to discredit that type of effort. I just think it's more passive because yeah. it can be. I think travel as therapy can be very beneficial if you can benefit from having a flexible and open schedule. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by flexible and open, I mean is like you wake up, you can decide where you want to go where you want to eat, whatever. I'm talking solo travel. That'd be the ultimate example. Like you yeah. have no responsibility to anybody but yourself. You wake up like, am I happy today? Am I hungry today? Am I sleepy today? And you do whatever the hell you want. I think there's value to that if you're uh, conscious of it happening, if you're aware of it. I think it's also can be really dangerous. And obviously you've met travelers like this on the road where people get that type of schedule they sleep in and then just like drink a bunch of bintang and then hang out. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, so uh, not that I, you know, not saying I'm not guilty of that occasion. No, I'm guilty of it too. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I think there's, there, there can be value if you're conscious of it because it's very passive 
uh, therapy. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like you're letting it, uh, you're opening the gate as much as you want. If one of my friends is staying with me right now, I was on the podcast just recently. Yeah. And he was traveling with a friend from America. And it was this friend's, this friend is in their forties, I think. And it was their first time internationally traveling is yeah. I understand. And totally reasonable um, behavior. I think he had mentioned to me, there was a day where my friend was telling his friend, yo, today, uh, let's just go our own ways, you know, like take it easy, do your thing. I'm just going to go check out this stuff. I'm going to, you know, I got something I want to do. You go do your thing. And my friend went off, had a little adventure, had a good, good day, came back and his buddy didn't leave like the, the hostel hotel area. Right. And right. And so, but that's, that's a card that he gets to play because he's traveling solo. He doesn't have any responsibility. And for him, I've been there, man, traveling where like yeah. you just need a freaking day off. And guess what? The buffet is open. You know, there's aircon yeah. and cable TV, mini yeah. bar. I'm going to chill, guys. I'm going to hit the pool. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, watch some Netflix, whatever it might be. Okay. Not saying that's what he did. But I'm just saying this as an example. So yeah. that's, I can still can be type of a therapy. You're deciding how much to open up that, that, uh, after the, after the, um, how much to open up that window to let in, you know, the experience. And yeah, yeah I think you come home, not necessarily having a profound, uh, experience because you, you didn't, um, uh, you weren't forced to to pull the door open. Whereas with um, working abroad, you're you're suddenly thrust into situations that might be uncomfortable, and you can't run away. Right. That is the key. That is the key. And you know, it's it's almost like um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I'm, I'm not as uh, uh, as poetic as I uh, as I would like to be with this, but there is a dreamlike state of first arriving in a new country where every single aspect of it is so different. And uh, as soon as you step outside, you're I, I don't know if this this probably happened to you um, when you first arrived, when you first traveled. And uh, there, I just remember my my ride from the airport in Thailand to the hotel, and it was I mean, it was almost like a religious experience. It was uh, you, I might as well have been on another planet, and yeah. uh, and it was a it was euphoric because it every single thing was different. It was mm -hmm. just. Um, it was it was a uh, information overload, you know. I I I, I um, in in the best possible sense because my I had the right mindset. I was open minded to the experience. Um, what I found was that it's ephemeral. You cannot hold on to that. Um, it's it's temporary, you know. And and I think I wonder if some of these these uh, travel writers who who do these kind of shorter trips and, and it, it could be a month or two months or three months or whatever. And, uh, but it's, it's very hard to hold on to that. Um, eventually point, yeah. you know, life gets in the way. Like you, you have to, uh, especially if you're, if you're moving to another country to live and work, yeah. it, it, the grind, you, you eventually have to get a job and go to work and navigate relationships with other people and um that is and 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 it becomes normal mm -hmm. and and that is um not what you read in those in those books you know everything is magical and everything is uh fantastical and and uh, i i do i do think that we have to draw a distinction between those two is that what you're is that what you're talking about in a way yeah and I, I, think I, I think i can elaborate easily on this so mm -hmm. and also bringing it back to the experience of being in korea specifically and choosing um employment or starting a business or doing something so i think to step way back we can look at like experience all right so when does an experience uh become 
when does it when does that you said it's like ephemeral like but if you how can you make it not ephemeral how can you make it last well is it just like the amount of time you spend with that experience not necessarily like i can mm -hmm. remember just speaking generally about ex experience not necessarily about travel going to a new place um i remember when i was got my first the first time i started driving right and uh i can remember the feeling of driving by myself i'm 17. i remember thinking to myself i want to make a mental photograph of this i want to hold uh, this yeah. i was i was just so i can't describe the feeling yeah i can't put it in words and i've lost it completely because of yes. time so more driving didn't increase that experience it actually made it more ephemeral um right the yeah traveling um i think you go someplace experience it if you stay there long enough, does that necessarily make it less ephemeral? Is it, is it the amount of time? Like I went on vacation versus I lived there for two years. Well, I think it could be the same. I think it could also atrophy if living there for two years, all you did was live there on your own dime, on your own clock, did whatever the hell you want for two years. Like, man, I backpacked uh, through Asia. I did the whole, you know, backpack through Asia thing. Um, for the better part of a year after I um, came to Korea initially, and then I, I traveled and then I came back, right? Right. So right. I had, I had a, a gap year and I, I did the, the backpacking thing. And I have lots of really awesome memories. There was some experiences there that I, I think changed the way I, I see myself, how I handle myself, but it's nothing compared to having to build a life where you have work. I think it's not necessarily a job. A job is the best um, avenue for it because it, it has those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So you're forced into having these relationships when you're living and working somewhere. You're forced, for such a strong word, but it is kind of like that. Like the reason I thought of this as a topic for the podcast was in the last podcast, we were talking about how living in Korea took us out of our comfort zones in ways that would not be possible otherwise. Sure. Like I made the example of my friends calling me on a Tuesday night and being like, Hey, we're sitting on the rocks down on Gwanganli beach. We're playing guitars and drinking beers. Get your ass down here. And I'm like, yo, it's eight o'clock PM. I'm about yeah. to put my pajamas on. And they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> I got to work. And tomorrow. if I was in Chicago, I'd be like, you're ridiculous. I'm an adult and I'm going to work tomorrow. Right. But all they have to say is, yeah, but, you're in Korea and this is your life now. And it's, it's something about, um, yeah, it's the work, it's building that social circle. The fact that you have to build one because you're living here, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing to travel, even when I traveled solo, when I think of like the experiences that were important, they were all with people. They were the people that I ended up, again, not to say forced, but it's kind of like you end up getting forced to make friends. And yeah. I look at my, all the photographs that are the most important memories for me on that that big trip it's all with groups of people that i was traveling with for over a month minimum you know you, so you're building something yeah I, I mean the way i uh a good metaphor for me is like um falling in love mm. it you, you know it, when you first fall in love it, it everything is so exaggerated it's mm -hmm. uh and and um that every every date you go on and ev everything's got to be special and it's uh it, it's memorable and um but it's not sustain it's not sustainable because but it's i'm not saying that it gets worse what i'm saying mm -hmm. is it it gets deeper and more yeah. meaningful and um and it's also has aspects of mundaneness um because you know because you just no, nobody stays in that um kind of glow of the of the new relationship and and I, and I think some people make the mistake is that just because I geographically moved to a new place that means every day will be magical and exciting and everything will be new and um and it is like that in the beginning but eventually you settle in to a schedule, a routine, 
Um, yeah, man, maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe I should take a step back and say it's not really the work. It's I mean, the job, again, I think is the fastest vehicle to get there. Mm -hmm. But let's say you just have a lot of like, um, you're financially independent. You want to have a, a big life experience. You're like, you know what, for the next 24 months, I'm going to live in Seoul. And you're from Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you hop a plane, you go to Seoul. And uh, yeah, you have to navigate how to get an apartment, everything. Let's say all that's really easy. Let's say you had it all like preset. But now you got 24 months. Even if you don't have a job, you're going to start all the the wow is going to start to fade. Yes. And then and then what comes next? Well, you don't have a job, but still every morning you got to wake up and go to the coffee shop. You're going to go to the same coffee shop eventually, and you're going to end up knowing the barista or someone else that's there. That's going to become part of your experience. It's going to be it's something you're going to be doing every week, perhaps for two years. That's a lot different than um, backpacking and being on the fly and moving around and just constantly having the wow, 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 as you're bouncing from place to place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think no matter what, if you're spending a certain amount of time in digging in, so maybe, 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 maybe this is what it is. Maybe it's like um, you, if you're traveling for a long period of time, you can still be caught with those kind of ephemeral experiences that might be a little more shallow because you're just popping from place to place. And again, I can't only say shallow. They're not, there's nothing, um, it's different type of experience. Yeah. Found as well, but it's that fleeting thing, you know, it's like, oh, that memory of that thing. Is it really going to have a, uh, as much of an impact on your, the way you see things? I think it does. I, if you're like my friend who's staying with me right now, He's been to like, he's on an epic trip. He went to Nepal, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Japan, Taiwan. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he's been all over um, in this period of time. And I'm sure he would tell you, and I would absolutely believe, you know, being able to flip the switch and just keep it moving. It keeps it fresh. It keeps these, these ideas, uh, you know, challenges you uh, daily to, uh, you know, physical challenges. You know, little things like where to get something to eat or use the bathroom become like an issue, you know, or how do I get from A to B, everything, what do I do here, what do I experience, you know, it's really stimulating, and I think that can have a big impact. But what I was trying to say with this, this message in the chat for this topic is that there's an equally valid and perhaps quite different um, experience that can impact the way you see the world, the world, the way you interact with the world, your personality, your values, uh, that comes from digging into one place and not yes. moving, even if it's a two-year trip, like if you're moving every week or every two weeks even, versus just staying there for two months. I think one, that really- One of the ways that I, that I look at it is like, you're, you're skimming off the surface in a way and the surface might have the most um it, it it might be it might be the most um kind of interesting uh uh part of the culture when you're coming from from let's say the united states or canada or europe or whatever and you go to thailand for two weeks and everything on that 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 exterior is just so different and so exciting but there's something different about building a work relationship, finding, making a friendship with someone from that country, going to a wedding ceremony, um, going to a work conference, you know, in, in another country. I mean, things that you wouldn't do if you're a traveler. I don't think you're going to walk in to a wedding with cargo pants and a, uh, you know, a, a, a sleeveless shirt and a, a flip flops and and have that experience you know what i mean well, like they're... yeah but i mean i don't know i think at the same time maybe like you could find yourself in a lot of novel places but again i think it's about that opening of the window i don't think if you don't take the initiative you're not going to have the opportunity to have uh the relationships and ultimately even if you do take the opportunity let's say you do take the opportunity to let, try to you know get out of your comfort zone uh to 
make a friend with this person or to get out of your comfort zone and go to this place or do this thing by the very nature that you chose to do it and no mm -hmm. one made you do it right <laughs> it's not and, really and and also zone. your intention your intention is also is also an important aspect of it because i think part of the intention of that is i want to experience this this is for me it's a it's a very exaggerated form of mindfulness almost like or uh you, like i keep going back to the e pray love it's like i want to go and have the go to this exotic country and have this experience that is unlike anything that i that compares to where i come from but if you drill down a little bit deeper much deeper which just requires time and 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 energy i mean you could make friends but are those like real friends? Like, like, uh, is that a and, deep friendship? Do you know? Like, um, I think, no, what that's kind of like a, that's a tangent to what I'm trying to say. Like, mm. I'm trying to think of like an example. Um, okay. Uh, when I first came to Korea, there was another professional, um, the board of education very important guy and it was a weekend and he was going with a bunch of other these are old people okay i was mm -hmm. the young young guy everybody there is like you know over the age of 50. um and that's a lot of who i was hanging out with at the time uh he invited me to go hiking with him and these other people and uh, I had just came here I have no Korean skill at this time um his English was I mean he had somebody interpreting this to me for the offer and he he was old he was like over 60. Mm -hmm. very kind but I didn't want to go at all and that's not even like even if it was like Ryan you gotta push your comforts that is not the choice I would make. I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to choose something else. There's plenty right. of other things I could do to challenge myself. This isn't the one. This right. sounds boring, dumb, like uncomfortable, not a growing experience. I don't want to do this crap. So it's something that I definitely wouldn't have chosen, even if my goal was to broaden my horizons or something like this. But because of who he was, because I respected him, because I needed to know him, and because I had just arrived, and this would be a chance to like be around all these people that I need to know I had to say yes like on the spot I was like yeah of course so then I go on this this trip and um that experience for myself not like I mean it was a beautiful trip I remember seeing um it was in the autumn these giant black birds I think they were crows uh just flying in like this around this ridge and it's like a bowl of of uh, um, autumn colors and these black birds soaring beautiful hike just beautiful um i didn't like the food i remember that but fine doesn't matter right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the overall like physical experience yeah i like hiking around it's fun but i learned something about myself on that trip i learned how to be comfortable around groups of people that we don't share a common language i had oh, okay. I see what you're saying. never like this before i learned it's okay to just not talk for a while yeah I, these are these are things that are were not part of my my uh, my mo before um i learned uh how to be polite uh and be appreciative when when you can't use the language you want to use um i i think on that trip i learned a lot about observing people and how to do it uh, tactfully and how to remember um you know how to note the interactions i'm seeing um ultimately it was still an uncomfortable experience when i came home i was really happy to uh finally be finished with this little trip but right. i'm telling it to you right now because i know that it affected the way that i uh, interact with people though it, it was a, just a little bit enlightening
Um, I don't think that, I know that wouldn't have happened if I was on a solo trip looking for um, an experience to broaden my horizons. Okay. It just wouldn't have been Even if it came up, I would have shot it down. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. When you're, yeah, in, when you're it's doing a, 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 a trip, let's say across Southeast Asia for six months or whatever, how likely are you to reconcile with discomfort whereas mm -hmm. the whole kind of mo of doing a trip like that is to be comfortable like and I'm, I'm not talking about like going to like a resort or anything i'm not talking about like you know that kind of stuff but it's like um wh what am i running away from uh you know i'm i, I want to uh get away from the the mundane mundanity of of uh of my everyday life and i want to i want to have this spiritual experience where i go to this foreign country um but how likely are you to put yourself in these uncomfortable situations where you kind of drill down a little bit into the well reconcile the discomfort accept it even though you didn't want you know you're you're probably like i, I would have been okay with not doing that if you you know you're you're like i you know but well, i bet you, you but the fact, fact that you told the story tells me mm -hmm. you're actually you learned something it was it was it was actually a very worthwhile uh experience yeah. and I, I can pair this with with another really short story that happened just prior so just before i um I was traveling in uh, doing the backpacking thing in Asia and traveling solo. And yeah, and I would tell you even now, that was a very personally challenging thing to do. Um, you have to be responsible for yourself everywhere you go. Um, anybody that's traveled solo or even has thought deeply about it, you know, this is a thing. You've got to mm -hmm. really think, you got to be careful. You know, you're on your own. Um, I remember I was in Indonesia, I was in Lombok. It was my first time in Lombok and I had met some of these guys and um, I met them by accident. We were surfing and I was by myself. And if you're by yourself and you're surfing in a place with other people, you end up you know, kind of meeting people, having a beer afterwards in the evening or having meals and stuff. And some of the guys were staying at the same place I was staying. And one uh, night, I got invited. They said, "Hey, man, do you want to come with us? We're renting a renting a like a, a, a four wheel drive truck, and we're gonna drive up to the volcano." And I said, "I'll think about it." Right? You yeah. know, in my mind, I knew absolutely I don't want to do this. They're gonna wake up early. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be around people. Like I don't want to be trapped in a car for four. It's like you know, four or five hours or something. No way. It sounds horrible, right? Okay, for me that that wasn't didn't even seem like a personal challenge I wanted to take. I didn't see any value in it. What would I get from that? Nothing. Yeah. Okay, same trip. Shortly thereafter, maybe a month or two after, I go over to Java and I was in Yogyakarta, and there's this very famous temple Borodor, and I wanted to um, see it. And I wanted to have the experience of seeing it by myself. So I went out and I found uh, a guy with uh, I don't know why I didn't rent my own motorcycle. It's kind of funny. I went and found a guy who had a motorcycle on the street somewhere and I paid him like I told I paid him a ton of money. I gave him like 20 bucks on the spot. I said, I'll give you 20 bucks and I'll give you 20 bucks if you pick me up at 4 a.m. You know, here's here's where I'm staying in my hotel. So he came, of course, to get the other 20 bucks and he yeah, took yeah. me there and uh, we got to the park at the very open and I got damn lucky. There was like one other person on this entire like temple grounds and it was a really big experience. Now for me, I'm like, man, I'm out of my comfort zone. Woke up early, had to negotiate the ride. Can't, you know, I did all this so I could have this experience. Man, I did it, you know? But I wasn't doing the social thing, wasn't even on my spectrum because that's actually what was hard for me. I didn't know that, I didn't see that. I didn't have that perspective until I started working someplace, until I started putting myself in situations where I didn't, couldn't easily say no. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So when you're working or you're trying to build uh, practical, real relationships, it gets a lot harder to, to, to cash that in, to say, no, I don't want to, I'm staying home. Your friend says, no, I don't care. It's Tuesday night. 
you know, I'm your new friend. This is your opportunity to, you know, to have an experience here. You're coming downstairs when you're uh, someone in your professional circle says, hey, even though you don't speak the language, you need to come on this this hike with us because it's a way to network with all these people. These were things that I didn't want to do. And yeah. they don't even sound like, like I know I'm repeating this over and over. They don't feel like um, they were personal challenges that had value. And they turned out they did because, you know, you don't really know yourself. You don't really know what you need. And it made me so much more of a social person. It's been so valuable for me. Um, okay. Yeah. I am so much more comfortable uh, in any social situation. Um, it's helped me as a teacher. Absolutely. And, and so when you were, when you lived in America, is this something that you wouldn't have thought of? You, you would have just called a friend and you would have gone to, you know, do something together or is this, um, I mean, did it teach you to become more independent? I mean, do you think that's what you learned by, uh, I think, I think, yeah, I think living here and those experiences that I've like described, that's like way back, but I mean, those types of things continue to happen. Um, I think it helped me become more likely to be the person among a group of friends who reaches out and grabs somebody else to bring them into the group. Um, it's made me, it just, yeah, it was a, for me, it was a, the, the thing that I needed to learn was to be more social. My point mm -hmm. is I didn't know that. And I wouldn't have learned it had I not taken a job internationally that kind of pushed me into those situations, pulled that window open. It was like, hey, these experiences are going to happen to you. You have to give up a little control, I guess, is what I'm saying. Uh, it, it, that's the fast way to do it, maybe. Maybe you don't have to. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's so funny because I'm almost, um, I mean, it's kind of funny that maybe for me, I, I was... Um, a very social person in in the United States, and uh, for me, uh, coming overseas was kind. What well, the difficulty was being alone, and 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 just uh, maybe it's maybe it's a, a codependence kind of a, a, a defense mechanism, where I don't know who I'm going to meet at this school that I'm going to be teaching at. And I need to be okay to be by myself and to be able to navigate this city and uh, and 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 not uh, lean on somebody else to mm. get from A to B and to figure it out. And it it gave me the confidence to um, kind of be with myself. Um, and and so. What yeah, I, mean, I, found... I didn't I don't want to say like I'll let you continue a second. I just want to interject. Yeah. I want to say this is a great contrast. Great mm -hmm. contrast. I don't want to say like uh working abroad and making these commitments make is like uh all about becoming social. I'm just saying it's a new thing. So for you it sounds like it was flipped, which totally makes sense to me. Yeah, no, but I but I think I, I don't think codependency is necessarily a good uh and when when I say codependent, I'm uh, small c codependent. I, I don't think I have like a, a pathology of of being, you know, code, having codependent relationships. Um, but f for me, um, these leaps of faith, where I'm like, I'm at work, I've got a, a a big friend group, and I'm like looking on the internet for a job in Thailand teaching, and I want to do this by myself. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I think I, I grew up very much kind of, um, you know, come on, come with me. Let's let's do this together. The safety of of having a buddy to mm -hmm. kind of do this with me and finding out that I actually have the resolve and the resources to be alone mm -hmm. and be by myself and and do something that's kind of challenging. I, I was never, you know, of of the three of us uh, in our in our podcast, you you Kevin and and me, um, I'm by far the least traveled person. It's it's ironic because I've lived over half my life in another country at this point. Yeah. Um, but you've also but, you've also lived in multiple countries, whereas Kevin and I haven't. That's well, I true. I I lived in Thailand for a couple of years. Uh, three years, years. and then I lived in Korea for about 20 years now 
And uh, but this was something that I was completely on my own. And 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 all the voices in my head were um, you're going to fail. Nobody's going to like you. You're not going to make any friends. You're not going to be good at the job. You're you know, all, all those those kind of negative voices were um, were present. And I was able to push those away. And to take that leap of faith and say, I'm going to do something that's just crazy. Um, the funny thing for me was it was never, it wasn't like, um, it, it wasn't one of those situations where I was like, the wheels fell off the bus in America. And uh, so I'm going to go on this spiritual journey to Bali and, you know, and yeah, uh, sure. Malaysia, and I'm going to just have this, this uh, exotic experience. I was For just sure. like, I'm going to move to another country to a place that is so far removed from anything that I, I, I didn't even know what to anticipate at all. It was, uh, and, and to actually be successful at that to, to make it work. I, I'm not, not successful, let's say in the monetary sense, but just as far as like, I didn't end up homeless, you know, on the street in mean, Bangkok, you know. I don't want to talk about like your finances on the podcast and stuff like this, but <laughs> uh, for people, I mean, it's been stated before in the podcast, like your other ventures and stuff. And I think it's worth mentioning as you say that, like, um, not to be too modest, but I mean, you've had a successful career for, you know, a couple decades. You're a property owner, you have a small business, you're a published author. You're like, I mean, you've got a list of like accomplishments that are, you know, monetarily compensated. I, that's true. I mean, and the, these these were all things that happened, uh, you know, y years after it was a it was a slow process. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, but it might have been. I mean, I don't want to say too much, but maybe it's because you built up some confidence that you could get shit done. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I actually kind of. Um, cringe at the idea or wince at the idea of having not taken that leap that that was probably one of the most profound experiences of my life was was to say i'm gonna do something crazy mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna move to thailand and uh is it gonna work out uh i you know i had it was just a and and for some people you know a lot of the people that i worked with for them, it was it was nothing, you know, like, oh, I'll move to Thailand. It, but for me, just my own temperament, my personality type, um, that was uh, a, a very much that was very much a uh, a, a, a risky venture. Um, and, and I had a, a lot of doubts, you know, about whether it was going to work out. And um, and and so to say that I I learned something about myself was is an understatement because not only was I able to successfully take care of myself and 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 figure it out um once I got here I found wonderful friends it was mm -hmm. you know it's it's like you know uh both Thai Korean uh Canadian American um all, all of these these close friendships that i that i still cultivate to this day um i i think one of our you know one one of our our one of the things that hold us back so much from from doing things like this is fear you know yeah. and and if you if you live a, a kind of fear-based life um you'll you'll never take those kinds of steps and take those kinds of risks and um, I'm here to say it's doable. You know, it's doable. It's not. It's not an impossible thing. Um, I wish I. I wish I had traveled more. Um, but you, I. I also came to the conclusion that I'm not necessarily a traveler. I kind of use a different different language for to describe myself. I'm a uh, a nester, so to speak. Yeah. You know, I moved to a city. And I want to really like dig in and 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 live there and see if mm -hmm. I can become part of that uh, society, and um and then what and then the the strange thing that you that you notice or that you realize is that um it's people are the same everywhere. It's it's not yeah. 
a lot of similar challenges and, and like like uh you know if you're working within the same like ses especially you're yeah um i i empathize like with um i know students here have unique challenges to american students but so much of their so much of their experiences still are really similar to like what i was going through when i was 20. um exactly. uh it's yeah and same thing with friends it's just like yeah it's not it's not as scary as you think and exactly. to bring it back to the to the kind of the thesis but the the, yeah, the yeah. chat the just just to like what you're saying talking about individual challenges and how it um improved uh self-confidence and your ability to do things um again i don't i'm not i have to keep like prefacing saying i'm not talking down travel as therapy because yeah. i think it is absolutely and i recommend it to most people i think can i think pretty much everybody can benefit from getting outside of your comfort zone for a little bit getting outside mm -hmm. of your house go somewhere but there's a big difference between the challenges of okay um i'm going to la for the weekend i gotta figure out where to get a flight get a hotel what to eat or you know i gotta i'm going to bangkok i gotta figure out the same thing a flight a hotel what to eat where can i walk around where's the theater what 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 will i see um where's the shopping district blah blah, blah. um or if, even if there's more challenging places um uh you know um you're going hiking in you know New Zealand or something. You gotta you gotta work those things out. Those are personal challenges. I think those yeah. are a lot of value to that. But I think it's a whole nother thing when you go to a place and you're like, no, I'm going to put down roots. I'm going to nest. I'm going yes. to figure out how to get a freaking apartment. I'm going to live here. I'm going to get a permanent visa. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to make a network of friends. That's going to be my community, and this is going to be my home. I'm going to yes. live here. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, I'm digging in. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, that's, that's a different thing and i guess i say it with too much excitement so it makes it sound like i'm making it better than the other i do think it's more dynamic but not necessarily mm -hmm. better i think they're really that's not what my my text was saying i'm saying they're two different things um one is is therapy that can help you get perspective i think travel as therapy is like you know you can see your house only if you step outside of it and look back at it right like mm -hmm. you know it's a dumb thought everybody knows this so if you travel you take a trip to london and you're there for a while you can kind of get a little perspective on your relationships and on the world you're in but your intention is to go back and live in that world and go back to those relationships with this new better perspective hopefully more objective more useful to you and to the people around you maybe it helps you build some empathy you know when you go back to that world fantastic but if you go to london you're like all right this is now I'm going to build here. You have to start, I don't know, it's it's a very radical, different thing from travel as therapy. And yes. uh, a very different challenge. And I, no. I recommend it to, to people that have the ability to do it. It's not always possible. Yeah, I would I would love to dig into that, like what you said. I mean, we have been already, but um I, I do I do like that you are drawing a distinction between the two because I think um, going to an ashram for a, a week and a half and meditating, and then you go back home and you talk about what a profound experience it was. Yeah, but have you ever lived in India for six months or a year or two years? That experience is going to be a very, very different experience than your you know, trip to... The Taj Mahal and the you yeah, know, you right, right. thing and... it doesn't have to be about the job. It, it's it's about finding your place. And I still experience this all the time because I still travel every year. I go somewhere. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, the last big trip I took was actually before COVID because it was during COVID. Travel kind of ceased. But um, in this last year, I took kind of a small trip. But the last trip I took, I would say it was a very important experience. I spent uh, two months on the road. Um, one month I was in Anuradhapura, Northern Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. and, um, I take classes in Vipassana and, uh, this was a, um, one of the standard, like 10 week Essen Goenka courses. 
so I my plan what I did was I did the um, the class and then I volunteered for the next like 19 days to just help out with there was another session that was going on at that time so I helped with like cleaning and preparing some of the food and so and then uh, the next month I blasted off to a friend's wedding in Bali and then uh, bummed around in, in Indonesia so these experiences well the second month really wasn't I mean, the wedding was awesome reconnecting with friends and stuff but as far as like challenging experience that first month okay that was big that's absolutely big oh yeah um, yeah so you just mentioned like you know meditating or something and like it, it struck me like yeah man, that's my last trip i would totally say and i come back with this experience it's given me perspective on you know how i think and um it's helped me to improve my own meditation practice that's why i did it um the volunteering um the people I got to meet during that very, very cool, big experience. But when I was there during that month, most of the people there that are staying long term like that, I was an oddball. Most people are doing like the, the 10 day class and they're gone or they're there for like half a year or longer. Ah, oh, OK, OK. There's, yeah, there's, I mean, especially there, there's a. Uh, people that are are there basically 24 seven, like they're monks, you know, and they're yeah. guys my age. Uh, and these aren't, you know, there's no like, uh, how can I say this? There's Sri Lankan people, but there's also, you'll find um, other uh, Westerners that have like not only the same language so you can communicate easily, but the same background culture. Right. So I can understand, like, you know, imagine there wasn't, but imagine there's like a guy there from Chicago that's like the analog of me. And what he's experiencing versus what I experienced, apples and oranges, man. Just like, yeah. Whoo, yeah. Totally different. Well, let me ask you something. I mean, are, is what we're describing maybe more related to the people than it is the the geography or the architecture i mean because that those are the yeah. things that you notice right away you know it's just like um wow this place looks so much different um one, one of the things that i noticed when i f first went to thailand i was taking a uh, they picked me up in a van and drove me from the uh, don muang uh, apartment to my hotel and um i couldn't you know the motorcycles it looked like okay somebody's gonna die like this is the <laughs> this is this is madness. Like this can't be the way people really drive or ride on a on a on a highway or a freeway. But th those that's superficial stuff. Um, when you stay somewhere for a year or two years or three years, um, it's uh, and I can I'll give you an example. Um, uh, I'm I'm an English teacher. You're you're an English teacher. Um something that i something that you wouldn't know just by living by staying in korea for a week or two is when a student is embarrassed um they'll smile you know and uh and and uh in in the west that th you would say what are you smiling at <laughs> you know like you're you're you've missed four classes you're going to fail you know and <laughs> it's a it's a cultural thing right like when when uh in korea when you're embarrassed you you smile and uh and and we don't do that and and these are these are just things that you you start to pick up on when you've spent a substantial amount of time in a culture and you start to understand it on a, a much deeper nuanced level and those are something that you those are things that you're just not going to pick up in and 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 Let's be honest, you know, when somebody spends two weeks in Bali or two weeks in Korea or two weeks in Thailand or whatever, they usually come back with a kind of uh, uh, ecstasy, you know, like it was so beautiful, the this and the that, and they they never dug down and saw the, the you know, and, and I don't want to say ugliness because there's the beauty and there's the ugliness and yeah, there's think the... You know. I think the listeners can get get a picture of what you're trying to say. Yeah. And I I just wanted to emphasize that it's not necessarily about the time that you spend someplace, but the more time you do spend someplace, the more likely you are to dig in, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You That's can spend true. a week no. 
like you go to Mexico and just stay in Cancun at the resort for a <laughs> year. I guess then you'd end up having experiences. You get to know like room service really well or something. I don't. <laughs> right, yeah. That would be your experience, right? <laughs> yeah. So you'd be experiencing, you know, Cancun room service. But I'm saying that uh, the thought was like, if you are taking initiative to get a job or to build a business or to build a life and uh, nest and put down those roots, um, you know, buy a couch you know it's a challenge like anything or like find this. find find yeah. a couch on the sidewalk you know and the yeah like yeah, all these free one you know yeah all these things um it's i think there's a lot of value to it that isn't really talked about as much as when people and it is i think therapeutic in a way i think there it can be if you're approaching it consciously and um with intention it can be just as therapeutic as the idea of travel as therapy, which is such a common trope and a common idea in in um, especially in Western culture. Um, I think there's uh, we could make another we need to make another book is what I'm saying. I think you got to write a new book, Jack. It's got to be like eat, pray, <laughs> love. I don't know what we call it. Um, um, I'm not even gonna eat, it's not, it's not. Yeah. Uh, eat, pray, <laughs> live. How about that? Something like that. I don't know. Sure. Oh, actually, that's kind of good. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, the eat, pray, yeah. love. It's like, like you were saying, like you know, initially falling in love. There's like this, this kind of su superficial, but like, like explosive, expansive feelings and stuff. Yeah. Um, but living, man, just eat, pray, living. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's how the episode right there. Eat, pray, living. Eat, pray, live. That's our. Uh, that's the title of the episode. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there is a, I, I do, I, I would, I'm going to make a judgment call. I, I do think that um, living in another country for uh, a substantial amount of time is more rewarding in, in, in the same way that like when you fall, you know, dating someone for three months, three weeks and then jumping, you know, leapfrogging to another person and, 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 and just always, you know, as soon as soon as there that that kind of crush uh, or whatever you want to call that uh, initial stages of of falling in love or or falling in like or whatever, um, there is something deeply rewarding about really immersing yourself into a culture. And uh, and I, I wish Kevin were here because he he's gone even deeper with the yeah. language, you know, language wise, you know, um, and 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 the things that you learn by um by even learning the language and and talking to uh, uh people from that country in their their native language there is something uh profoundly satisfying about that um yeah. for for some people i'm not going to say all people ac across the board but uh, for those of us that have stayed here for 20 years i mean there's a reason yeah. we're still here you know uh, yeah i've got a i gotta uh can we cut for one yeah second? yeah yeah i'll i'll edit this out yeah no problem I want, i'll be right back dude no problem i'll just hit pause okay i just paused it now we're back on uh we're recording yeah so no, i, I kind of cut you off do you have a segue to bring it back how do you do this um yeah yeah so um i mean we kind of cover i mean uh is there anything else you wanted to add about uh that that we didn't uh that, that you didn't uh talk about no, I feel like we really kind of beat this one to the ground. I just thought it was a fun thing to share with listeners that are potentially thinking of, you know, um, teaching abroad, working abroad, coming to Korea, um, or have the option. Um, it was kind of presented to me that way, way back of, you know, coming just to check it out for a little bit versus mm -hmm down you know roots so to speak or taking on responsibility um if you have the chance i really think it's if you if you're not in a situation where it's prohibitive i really encourage you to go for it um i look at all my friends that had opportunities to work here even the ones that uh after having worked left saying oh i didn't like the job I didn't, you know, what I, maybe even they didn't enjoy being in the culture, or whatever. I still think they benefited from it because yeah, they yeah. got to have an experience of like, you know, how to build something by yourself. Was, was your, was your plan to stay here? Um, 
I mean, did you think you would still be here this many years later? Absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. No yeah. way. Uh, no. No, no, no. I think right up until about 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just basically right before COVID. I think every time the contract that uh, you and I work on and Kevin works on, we're all working at the same uh, university. Yeah. We're on two, two years contracts. Um, every time that came around, I was always like, yeah, two more years and, and then uh, it's time to transition. Yeah. But there was, I mean, we've talked other episodes, but there's always uh, circumstances that just kept um, this career and this situation intriguing. Um, and then, you know, as you, well, not as you, it depends on the work. Certainly people don't like their jobs. I love teaching. So yeah, I just yeah. got, I found a job that the schedule works for me, the compensation works for me, the, um, and the, the actual physical job I love doing. So yeah, I never thought of myself. I never thought I'd become a teacher. I never mm -hmm. saw that. Uh, oh man, I don't know anyone that loves teaching as much as you. I mean, you yeah, really, really perfect fit. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, hand in glove for you, uh, for sure. Um, I just wrote down a couple of questions that are kind of related to the the topic. And I'm just wondering, what is what would you say is like your most profound experience like as a uh, in, in, in and I know this is a <laughs> this is not not an easy question, maybe off the top of your head, but I'm just wondering, like, what, what is something that's so profound for you that you experience just by by virtue of coming to Korea and by living here. Profound. Okay, I think I can answer this and make this short. You'll hear a lot of people say or complain about um, how the place they live in has a lot of repetition. It doesn't matter where you are. You'll find everybody that lives anywhere says this about their hometown. Yep. Um, in America, like every strip mall looks the same. You know, you go to, it doesn't matter if you're in Kansas City or if you're in Milwaukee, it's the same, you know. Um, uh, my girlfriend's Korean and she says this about Korea. I just got back from a big bike trip and I was telling her how awesome Gunsan is. We just, we started in Gunsan and biked up to Chunju and then down to Daegu. And uh, so we're in all these little villages and stuff. And I was telling her how awesome they were. And she's like, ah, oh, come on. They're all the Korean Korea. Everything's the same, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. um, I've heard foreigners in Korea also say this. I've heard foreigners in Milwaukee and Chicago say that about those cities too. I think one of the most profound experiences I've had is um, living here is exploring and learning that your backyard is much more dynamic than you think mm. there is and and soul is a good place for that to happen because i th and i think we had an episode about this already but this could be the next topic if not yeah how and we've talked about it but never made an episode of it one of the awesome things about soul is that there's just so much here you could never possibly see the whole city like as soon as you do walk every street you come back it's going to be all different again Mm -hmm. It's just like any big city, any big city has this quality, but profound experience for me is, um, just getting outside, um, of routines and seeing that there's always something to experience, even in your backyard, like really fast example. Um, 2015, I had a friend at coworker at the university yeah, and yeah. he's a biker, uh, like bicycles. I didn't, I never gave a crap about a bicycle. I had a bicycle in Chicago. I barely used it. Um, I used it just to commute sometimes. Uh, and I, I didn't enjoy it really. And he was into bikes and he likes biking. He's telling me to bike. I'm like, you bike in Seoul? Are you nuts? Like, right. yeah, this does not look like a good idea. <laughs> no. He's like, no, it's, it's awesome. He finally convinces me to spend, he took me to the bike shop. I mean, that's how much he twisted my arm. I didn't go on my own. He took me to a bike shop. I said, I'm buying the cheapest one you got. That's all I said. And he gave me this, like, I think it was like $100, $120 Chinese seven speed hybrid piece of garbage with orange tires. And uh, mine's yeah, green it and it has a basket. But uh... yeah, th this is probably the same model. <laughs> and 
um yeah that was that was the the ex that was that experience after all this time i think that was the most profound experience we took a trip uh no preparation or anything he's like let's go um i bought the bike like during the week that weekend we biked to Incheon. we uh took a ferry boat over to an island we biked over the top of the island beautiful vista we got to the beach we cowboy camp in the sand yeah got eaten a lot by mosquitoes um but it was just amazing to me it was like wow this was always here i've been here for you know was at that point like eight years or something i never knew this was like, how did i not know this that's and amazing I, think, I thought you've been biking for you know since you got here that's oh, uh no, no, that's no. amazing it was late 2015 as well um yeah and then i just got a fever for it because the bike trails here are are you know we've done episodes on it <laughs> yeah, um, yeah yeah but my point is that i think wherever someone's living um i think it's easy to 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 see patterns and forget that there's all these unique things around you. You don't have to be in Seoul. You can be in a little rural town in Wisconsin yeah. and yeah, just break out of your, your habits and, you know, um, try to visit another part of the, the village. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's a tough question, man. No, that's no, a no, question. that's a tough question. I, for, for me, like, you know, the, the most profound experience is probably, um, you know, getting married and, and having a child and raising a kid in Korea. That yeah, was, I would think uh, so. yeah, I mean, that that uh, goes without saying almost, but um, it, it is uh, it is fascinating to to watch my daughter grow up um, basically Korean, you know, a, a culturate a culturally Korean um, and uh, just how how um, how much I learned about the culture um, vicariously through her experience, you know, just growing up here. And um, I guess, you know, it, it sounds it sounds cliche, but, um, you know, just how big the world is and yet how how the, the you know, the, the I don't know how to explain it, but just, you know, um, there's this kind of uh, this is maybe more this is maybe more in the past, but just this idea that, uh, you know, uh, only you know Americans, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, know how to raise children, or you know, like uh, you know, in 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 other countries, they don't really care. You know, just this nonsense kind of thing that, like, I mean, it's uh, you know, uh, uh, the family unit in Korea is is you know how close they are and how much how much love there is and how how similar we are. It, it transcends culture and, and it, it, it makes me sad given our, you know, the political climate and the misunderstandings of of other cultures and just how the hopes and dreams and aspirations that parents have for their children um, transcends culture. And yeah. it, it's it's uh, it, it's 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 something that I, I wish I could, um, you know, explain to people. And and I I think it's misunderstood and and because we we do get a little so caught up in our own bubble, and um and and that's and that that is something that that I I think is is just a beautiful realization, um uh, that I had just by by virtue of rate of of having a family here in Korea, um is there any uh do you ever have any regrets you know like uh do, do you know you. you do you ever feel one foot in, one foot out? I mean, do you have, do you ever miss uh, the United States? Do you, do you feel like you're, you know, you're but you're here and there, or but also nowhere? I mean, is that again? You're asking you know? you're asking the wrong person. Um, yeah. Because I think I I got really lucky. I just stumbled into a career I didn't plan for and one that I I loved so. Uh, do I miss my family? Yeah. Like my mom, my dad, my mm -hmm. sisters, my, mm -hmm. my nieces and nephews, my brother-in-law, like, um, cousins, uh, my, my family is a very close family and, um, very fortunate for that. But I, I make effort to get home every summer. Yeah. Um, exception of what happened during like the COVID period where I got kind of locked in here. Um, last summer was the first time I was home in a long time. Um, and 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hate to say no, because it's it's BS. Everybody has regrets, right, man? But no, I just, sure. I never really, I, I you know me, I worry a lot. That's my thing. But yeah, that's something I just never really worried about. I feel like there's a million ways to be happy. And yeah, this has just kind of always worked for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think regret, like. I mean, I have thought about the career that I left because I was just starting. Yeah. Uh, I probably have more money. <laughs> <laughs> but <That's not> a... <laughs> well, we were yeah, talking about it, finance. So we're, we're, we're doing okay. Yeah, but, we're, if, we're, if I, but if I look at that, if I look at that, the second I think that thought, I think about the work that I'm doing now versus them. And it's not that I dislike that work. I chose to do that. Yeah. But from that moment that all I know of that work is what I was doing then when I was like 29 and now, and I would absolutely choose this absolutely. Mm -hmm. And always. So yeah. yeah, it's hard. It's hard to, to think of any regrets off the top of my head. If I, if you gave me like the day to think about, it, I'm sure I'd find some because like, everybody has regrets. That's, that's reality. The thing for me is I, I, I just feel like, you know, even if I were living in America, I, I don't know if my life would be that much different in some ways. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I I'm lucky okay. enough to, yeah, yeah. I have a job that I enjoy. I have a, 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 a wonderful life. I have a family. I mean, I am living the American dream. I, I may not happen to be on American soil, but uh, in in the same respect, I, 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 I think um yeah, some of the larger I, like global decisions and trajectories, they're kind of persistent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I can dig that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a kind of a nice way to end the episode, like talking about the profound ways that we've changed, but also how going abroad, it's not going to completely like rip your soul apart, you know, like <laughs> you still, <laughs> still exist as you, you know. <laughs> what I think I, I think to end this, the end of the episode, I think um it's like a full circle, right? Um, you come over, you you get that culture shock, um, you settle in, you, and then all of a sudden you realize that you go, no, wherever I, you know, uh, wherever I go, there I am, you know, it's just like, this is, um, I, I, again, I, I, I come back to it. I, I always say this, I go, I, um, I had to go to Korea to find the, um, American dream. I'm using air quotes there. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's like I, I found yeah, and, my thing. And, and for, uh, listeners, uh, for listeners, what Jack just said, like I had to come here to find the American dream. He's not the first guy I've heard say this. That's an expat oh, really? living, career living. Yeah, man, I've heard this in other ways. I think it's a common concept. Like, because I think part of the American dream is like that self, um, self-development, self-discovery, independence, yes. build your own thing, make your own world. And when you go abroad, as we've gone over in this episode, you kind of get forced into, hey, you got to make it. Because yeah. no one's going to make it for you. Like, exactly. you got to figure it out. You got to build it up yourself. And then it just starts like the example I made of you. Like, it gives you that confidence to give this a go. Hey, I'm going to, you know, uh, try this. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. Yeah, absolute, absolute. I definitely yeah. feel, uh, I feel the same. Yeah. I think that's a perfect place to end it. And uh, I think, you know, people who are on the fence or whatever, thinking about it, listen to the episode. Um, you know, we, we're just a couple of normal guys who, uh, you know, found our niche and it just happens to be in South Korea. But, uh, you know, it's not it's not always going to be right in your backyard. It's uh, you got to You got to go look for it a little bit. But uh, don't don't let fear uh, rule the day, you know, Um <laughs> take a risk, go for it. Um, it can pay off. So, uh, Ryan, thanks for the chat today, man. That was great. Uh, listeners out there, you can, uh, listen to the podcast on the soulpatch.com. We've got our own website. If you can give us a positive review in Apple podcasts, or you can go to podchaser.com. Podchaser is another, uh, website where you can listen to the podcast and give us a mention, give us a positive review that would really help us out. So uh, we'll see you at the next episode. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.
on impulse adapting to fit to the constructed chaos accepted as it In this complex of choirs I exist without sound I am lost to the future, forced underground Where I frequently polish the steel of my frame Tempering limbs while repeating my name 